This morning, I want to close with a song, and I want to start with um, with John chapter 6. Of course, you're aware of the many prayer requests that we, we have ongoing. If you have one this morning, uh, please post that. And just to make you aware, I'm not sure about tomorrow morning. Um, I've got a couple of things I'm trying to arrange, but I may miss daily devotion tomorrow morning again. So if I'm not on, you understand why. Uh, John chapter 6, we're picking up in verse 60. And of course, this is still the same discourse that uh, Jesus has been in re relating and communicating uh, the necessity of his body being broken for us and the shedding of his blood as an atonement for our sin. And he, he even makes it more graphic metaphorically to say that if you don't eat of my flesh or drink of my blood, you have nothing to do. Uh, you have no part of me. And what Jesus is indicating is, is that it has to be an all or nothing proposition, that we can't just stick our toes in the water with Jesus, uh, with God, and expect that there be um, uh, any results in that. There are a lot of people that just kind of stick their toes or maybe they adopt Christianity as a philosophy of life but have not been born again. And there is a necessity to enter the kingdom that Jesus spoke of in Mark chapter 1 where he said, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Um, and uh, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, he says. And so uh, there is that that uh, redemptive work that he does, that there's a difference in just taking on a philosophy of Christianity and being born again, uh, having that transformation of life, new life in the spirit. And we saw yesterday that there were two repeated themes that Jesus spoke of. One is the resurrection. And because he is the first fruit of the resurrection, we too will be raised from the dead. And that's, that's what we look to in eternity. And the other promise, that's a repeated theme in this chapter, is eternal life. That this life is not all there is, but there is eternal life with him. And that's a hard perspective for us to grasp. But after he said all these things, and um, the saying was hard, uh, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part in me. Then in verse 60, it picks up and it says that when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? Now we have to realize that when John makes reference to disciples, he's not just speaking of the 12 that Jesus had chosen, the 12 apostles or the 12 disciples, but there were many people that were following Jesus around. We see this all in the account of the Gospels. They would go from place to place and follow him, and some were just seeking to see the signs. Some maybe were mesmerized at this teaching that this rabbi uh, was bringing was very different in many respects than the teaching of the current rabbis. But there were a lot that were following after him. But uh, when he made these statements, they, they said, you know, these are hard sayings. These are, these are difficult things to accept. Who can listen to it? Verse 61, but Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, he said to them, uh, do you take offense at this? Do, are you scandalized by what I've just said? Have you taken a stick of offense in your mouth? Uh, that you're offended by what I've said, that you must drink of my blood and eat of my flesh, then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And here Jesus is, uh, is making reference to his ascension to the right hand of the Father after he was raised from the dead. Um, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Now notice he says here, it's the spirit that gives life. Now what he's speaking of is eternal life, that it is the Holy Spirit who regenerates us, who causes us to be born again. And there's no profit in the flesh. In other words, to be born again, to be made right with God, it requires that we trust what Christ has done and the spirit of God regenerates us. That's what Paul speaks of. We are a new creation in Christ. The old things have passed. Behold, all things have become new. When he was speaking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, Jesus said that you must be born again. And he was making reference to being born in the spirit, not being born in the flesh. And the flesh profits nothing. Uh, no matter how many good works we might try to do to attain righteousness with God, our good works are not enough. And somebody may say, well, you know, I've never really done anything bad. 
And if a person says that, if a person has that idea that, that maybe I'm, I'm just really not that bad, I've kind of always been a Christian, there's indication there that they don't understand that they are totally depraved in their sin nature. That as Adam fell in the garden to sin, that sin that Adam committed was passed down throughout the ages to every human being that has ever been born. We are born in sin and we must be born again. And so the flesh profits nothing. No amount of good works, no amount of going to church, no amount of uh, doing good to your neighbor, none of those things will gain eternal life and salvation for us. It is only by the work of the Holy Spirit of God when we've trusted Christ. And let me tell you this, if you've trusted Christ, then you have been given the Holy Spirit of God. Paul makes it very clear in Ephesians chapter 1 that, that when we are born again, we receive the fullness of the Spirit. There's not another work that has to be done that you get more of the Holy Spirit. He indwells the heart of every believer. And so you have the Spirit. You don't have to seek after it. Now, we have, to, we have to walk in the Spirit or stay in step with the Holy Spirit of God. But once we're born again, once we're saved, we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Verse 64, he says, But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who would betray him. Here he's making reference to Judas Iscariot. And then in verse 65, he says, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. He's repeating what he said earlier in the chapter. It's the Father that draws us to Jesus. No one saves himself. God draws and gives us the faith to believe and trust in Christ. After this, verse 66, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Why did they turn back and no longer walk with him? Well, his words were too hard. Um, it's very reminiscent of what we looked at last Sunday morning uh, in our teaching and on our, during our morning worship service as we looked at the parable of the sower and the seeds. The sower goes out and he sows the seed and Jesus in his parable is making reference to the word of God, the gospel. And there are some seed when, with the word when it's spread, some people's hearts, the soil was representation of a person's heart as Jesus later explained in the parable. Some of that falls along uh, the, the path and the birds come and they snatch up that seed that was sown. Uh, some fall on hard ground, uh, uh, hardened ground that's been walked on and uh, it sprouts for a little while but there's no depth to the roots. And when the sun comes, it withers the plant. Well, some people's heart, they might receive the word with joy in the beginning, uh, but, but it never takes root. Some seed fall among thorns and thistles, and uh, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't grow because the, the weeds overtake that plant that had been planted and he makes reference to that there are those that receive the word initially and but the cares and the worries and the concerns of life uh, choke out that seed but then there are other seed that fall in good soil and it produces up to a hundredfold well it's the same today and Jesus uh, in his day as he was still here there were those disciples that were following along with him. Maybe they liked watching the miracles. Maybe they got caught up in the excitement. And, but then when his sayings got too hard to accept, they, they abandoned him. And it's true today. The very same thing happens today. There are some that, that come, uh, come hear, hear the word of Christ and, and they think that it's, um, that it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a magic a kind of wand that can be waved and all of a sudden everything's going to be great in life if you accept Jesus and, and they receive it with joy in the beginning, but they find out that that's not the case. Uh, there, there are others that maybe just come to an exciting church service where there's lights and fog machines and all that kind of stuff and, and they're attracted by the uh, the flash and, and the circumstance of that. And you know, once once the rubber meets the road, they, they fall away. Or there are those who may come to a traditional model of church, and they love the orchestra, they love the choir, they love the Christmas cantata and the Easter cantata and all of that, uh, but they fall away. You see, the same happens today. And so um, the one that 
trust Christ, that, that believes in Christ, that accepts him as, as their Savior and understand the forgiveness of sin, understand the depth of depravity and are willing to repent and turn and follow Christ are those who are born again. And so it, don't be surprised when there are those that, that, that it doesn't take, so to speak. It's the condition of the soul. It's the condition of the heart. Um, and then verse 67, Jesus said to the 12, he said, do you want to go away as well? In other words, all these others are abandoning me. All these others are walking away. Now I'm going to turn to the 12. Do you want to go as well? And then Peter answered him. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered, did I not choose you, the 12? And yet one of you is a devil, referring to Judas Iscariot. I love what Peter said there. Lord, where else will we go? You have the words of life. I can remember years ago, um, 37 years ago or so, uh, shortly after Sandy and I were saved, we, I had gotten out of the Navy. We were going through Bible school. It was a very difficult time in our lives. Uh, we were living with her mom because Sandy had become pregnant and she could no longer wait tables. And it was just difficult. And I can remember very clearly sitting there at the desk in our bedroom and I was ready to throw up my hands and just walk away and say, you know what, this, this following Jesus is too hard. And I opened my Bible and began reading there in John chapter 6, and I came across Peter word, Peter's words to Jesus, uh, where Jesus said, do you want to depart? It was just the Holy Spirit. I said, J-Mo, do you, do you want to walk away now? And Peter's words were, were just resonant in my heart at that time. Uh, Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. You see, I'd lived in that other life, and it had no answers. But I knew that Jesus had the, all of the answers, not only for this life, but for eternal life as well. Hold on to that this morning. Uh, you may be ready to give up. You may be ready to, to say, you know, I just throw up your hands. Why is all this happening to me? You know, <laughs> there's nowhere else to go but to the Lord. Uh, that's the song I want to close with this morning. It's an old, old gospel song, but I love it. It's entitled, Where Could I Go But To The Lord? Living below in this so sinful world Hardly a comfort can afford Striving alone to face temptation's call Where could I
blesses you today. I pray that uh, God gives us an opportunity wherever we are, uh, whatever we're doing today, that he gives us an opportunity to plant a seed, to sow a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. That if we recognize that a seed has been planted, that we would cultivate that seed, uh, be an instrument that God would use to, to bring that person to Christ. And then if God, by his grace, would allow us to witness, to participate in somebody being saved today, man, that would be great. Pray that, ask God to open those doors, those opportunities, and I guarantee you he will do it because the Father is always drawing those to the Son. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Have a great day.